This is a great example of how university technology makes it to the real world. I know that you've used TMR sensors before, but have you used one with Pico Tesla sensitivity? Let's go ahead and talk to Neuranix about their solution. Yeah. Rihanna, thanks so much for joining me. Hello, thank you for coming. So what actually is Neuranix? So Neuranix is a spin-out of the first collaboration between Edinburgh and Glasgow Uni uh -huh. in Scotland, and we produce magnetic sensors. Right, what, what kind of magnetic sensing is it based on? So we're based on a quantum effect, it's called TMR, tunneling magneto resistance, and right, it's a big long word, word but <laughs> yeah. uh, that doesn't matter. It essentially just changes, it essentially reads changes in magnetic flux, and we are so sensitive that we can do that in the body. Right, so I guess the most common sort of magnetic sensor would be a Hall effect. Mm -hmm. What sort of advantages does a TMR sensor bring to the table that a Hall effect doesn't? Yeah, so Hall effect, you know, OPM, Squid, all these other variations, they're a lot bigger and they're a whole lot more expensive as well. We are aiming to be very small, the smallest, and we're also mm -hmm. looking to fit into all kinds of wearables. We also don't need to have any skin contact either, and the kind of main aim of Neuranix is to move TMR technology out of the lab and into real-world applications. Right, so there are a lot of TMR sensors on the market. I'm sure a lot of our viewers have used a tunneling magneto-resistive sensor before. The most special thing about our sensor is that we are the most sensitive currently. Right. We can detect picotesla level magnetic flux changes. Wow, okay, that's quite incredible. But why would someone want to detect down that low? And the other question that I have on that is, how do you go with noise immunity? Yeah, so why first is definitely because there are other modalities out there that would you, you would use to detect muscle contraction. So if you're thinking about PPG or um, electrodes, you know, these need direct skin contact. Whereas with TMR, with magnetic sensing, you don't need skin contact at all. So right. it, it removes all those other necessary kind of annoying things that you would get from those other sensing modalities. Mm -hmm. With really sensitive sensors, you're also going to be really sensitive to noise. Yeah. We are a magnetic sensor company, so with the companies that we work with, we do, are working on developing IMUs and using lots of lovely secret and beautiful um, contraptions and designs to re remove and reduce noises, but we're very lucky to have our co-founders as experts in this field mm -hmm. that are used to removing noise. Uh, and in our labs, we also have large shielded rooms that we can test all of our devices in. So we're working on improving sensitivity and then improving dynamic range throughout our sensor variations. Very cool. And then the other question I had was, so where, where are these sensors actually going to be going? I heard some sort of stuff about like wearables and health. Is that the application that, that, um, that Neuranix is envisioning for these? Every time I come to a trade show, I feel like I learn like 10 more different applications for our sensors. But currently our most popular are in the metaverse, XR, gaming, but then also digital health as well. The main thing is digital health or one of the main things. Uh, our co-founder is a professor in digital health, so it was a huge interest of right, ours. In good company. Exactly, exactly. And with that, our sensor can be used to do heart monitoring. So we can actually see the signal through clothing just from a single sensor. Right. And then does that need to be stuck to the body? No, it doesn't. So I can literally wear one of our development kits, so a single sensor and one of our earlier versions as well that's not even as sensitive and wear that as a strap over my clothes and I can pick up my heart through that. Right, okay. And then what, what's the reason for reinventing the wheel? I mean, surely you can do that with an electrode, right? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's electrical signals which do output some magnetic flux lines and such. Yeah. What, why, why wouldn't you just use a press on electrode. Yeah, so I mean, with electrodes, you've got to stick them onto the skin, as you said. So mm -hmm. that can be inconvenient, especially if you think of like um, in pediatrics, you, it's, it's uncomfortable for children, it can be uncomfortable for patients and also day-to-day -day wear. Mm -hmm. If you had something that was even integrated into the clothing that you were already wearing, that's way more like easy for your day-to-day -day life. Right. And then, Uranix, does it actually have a solution on the market right now that can be bought at distributors or how does the company work? So we're business to business. So okay. we're working with tier one companies, you know, and also uh, just a variation of different companies with different ideas mm -hmm. to help their kind of dreams become reality in terms of proof of concept projects. And we'll follow them through, we'll supply them the full solution. So from the sensor to the ASIC to the AI enabled hardware and software. Mm -hmm. And then from that, you know, we can just kind of take off with our foundries that we work with and supply millions of sensors per year. Great, amazing. Brianna, thank you very much. Lovely to speak to you. IPXs, this is once again exactly the thing we look for. Why we come to Silicon Valley and talk to people like Rihanna from Neuradix. If you're looking for more videos like this, we'll have more at the end screen. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and stay disruptive.